This is Horror Podcast. Welcome to This Is Horror, a podcast for readers, writers, and creators. I'm Michael David Wilson, and every episode alongside my co-host Bob Pastorella, we chat with the world's best writers about writing, life lessons, creativity, and much more. Now today we have a special episode in which we're previewing our Patreon podcast, Story Unbox, the horror podcast on the craft of writing. This is a Patreon exclusive in which we dissect short stories and films alongside a special guest. And recently we unboxed Benson and Moorhead's head trip of a film, Something in the Dirt. And we did that alongside one of our favorite writers, Gemma Files. So today we are giving you the first 30 minutes of that conversation. And if you enjoy it, do consider becoming a This Is Horror patron. Now before we jump into things, let us have a quick advert break. Through Dry Places is a brand new developer from D.H. Gutierrez. An old Spanish mission lies beneath a serene Texas lake, its secrets hidden for decades. The receding waters of a drought expose its ruins, and it becomes a source of inspiration for Matthew, an urban explorer struggling to maintain his once popular video channel. Determined to make it his next big video, Matthew sets out to uncover the mystery surrounding San Lazaro. But as he delves deeper, he finds himself face to face with his own fears. Through Dry Places by D.H. Gutierrez, available now on Amazon and beyond. From best-selling author Lee Mountford comes a new supernatural horror series perfect for lovers of demonic haunted houses. Book one, Haunted Perrin Manor, follows two sisters as they move into an old family home only to discover evil already resides there. The series is available in ebook and paperback formats and high-quality audiobooks from producer Hannibal Hills. Search Amazon and Audible for Haunted Perrin Manor now. Don't just read horror, experience it. Okay, with that said, here it is. It is our Something in the Dirt Story Unboxed Preview with Gemma Files on This Is Horror. This is Horror Podcast. Welcome to Story Unbox, the horror podcast on the craft of writing. I am Michael David Wilson. I am joined, as always, by my co-host, Bob Pastorella. And we also have special guest, Gemma Files, with us. Hi, everybody. Yeah, Gemma, welcome to the show. We are going to be unboxing, or at least attempting to unbox, and discuss (laughs) something in the dirt, which is i don't even know what to say it is such a trippy experimental film on on many levels it is i yeah. i would say you know for people if this is their introduction to benson and moorhead i mean maybe reconsider having it as your introduction <laughs> i i think you know uh an easier at least entry point would be to start with let's say a double bill of resolution and the endless and if you vibe with both of those then i think you're going to have fun with something in the dirt yeah i think that's a that's a good way to to look at it um you know uh, benson and moorhead are fascinating dudes um and you know, if you're if you're not used to their vibe, then maybe something like Spring or even uh, something like um, what is the time drug one? Synchronic. Synchronic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which a lot of people really hated for some reason. Um, I myself did not. Um, 
but both of those kind of present as more normal films mm -hmm. <laughs> or shit even you know archive 81 which half of which they uh they directed yeah um mm -hmm. where you've got uh you know their style but it's not it's it's but it's um it's it's not paired with a script that both of them came up with <laughs> um mm. The, the three things that I find interesting about all their stuff uh, are um, so often they're based around, except for spring, I'd say, they're, they're based around a very particular dynamic, um, which is two guys who are like Benson and Moorhead, even if they're not Benson and Moorhead. Um, <laughs> so, you know. Kind of friends, brothers, you know, people who are, um, you know, uh, together against this strange, numinous thing that they're experiencing. Um, and often um, one of them is more manipulative and one of them is more open um, in a way. Uh, in fact, you could say that with something in the dirt, uh, that dynamic is flipped because the one who's more manipulative in the endless is the one who is less manipulative in something mm. in the dirt. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the other thing to remember about something in the dirt is the thing that flashes on the screen at the end, which is, you know, um, in praise of making movies with your friends. Yeah. <laughs> this is very much a two guys in a room or rather two guys in a building kind of um, kind of movie uh, made during the pandemic. And much like, say, Ben Wheatley's In the Earth, which is another movie that came out of that need to make a movie when making movies was really fucking hard to do. Um, there, you know, it's, it's got this very small amount of people um, who are experiencing the thing that they say that they're experiencing, but then it's like framed and reframed and reframed and reframed. And, and eventually it becomes not so much about this is a thing that happened as this is a bunch of things that one guy told me happened and maybe they happen, but it's hard to tell. <laughs> How, what kind of experience, what kind of, you know, um, evidence do we have that these mm. things happened? Um, and yeah, yeah. So that's, those, those would be, those would be the big things to keep in mind. Uh, I think, you know, people who are familiar with Benson Moorhead are going to watch whatever they yeah. put together if they yeah. like them. Um, if not, they're going to go, oh, those fucking guys again. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Because... <laughs> It's oh those fucking guys again doing yeah. their thing, <laughs> yeah. But um, I but I do believe that uh the the main theme there, two two main themes. No one expects the Spanish Inquisition. The two main themes seem to be um loneliness mm. and um and pareidolia. Um, mm. the the idea that you know it's like we all know that humans are storytelling animals and that we, our brains are kind of set up to consistently look for stories in everything that we, um, everything that we encounter. And these guys are high on the storytelling end of things. Yeah. <laughs> so it's yeah. like both of them have like so fucking little going on in their, in their lives that, they like or that they're interested in that suddenly everything becomes you know there's there's a wonderful moment where um where uh i think it's john uh looks at levi's knuckle tattoos <laughs> and <laughs> realizes that they say 1905 which mm. is the date on the tape recorder that he just found and he's like yeah this is dream logic. <laughs> <I'm> like, yeah, <laughs> that is dream logic. It's absolutely dream logic. Dream logic is where everything makes sense because nothing makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah. suddenly you're, you're just making these connections and are the connections there and their relationship with each other seems to be driven by you know um the way that their theories about what's happening either intersect or they don't intersect mm. <laughs> you know and it's like how come every idea that you have makes sense and every idea that i have is just bullshit mm. <laughs> you know it's like i i think both of them have the you know uh have that conversation with each other at least yeah twice yeah, yeah. oh yeah yeah so shall we talk about what the movie is quote quote about well well yeah and i i mean for anyone if they're listening to the story unboxed for the first time if they're listening to the story unboxed for mm -hmm. the first time i should say we spoil the shit out of whatever we're talking about so i just want to give that disclaimer even though in many ways this might be of all the things we've unboxed the hardest thing to actually spoil because it's about yeah. so much more than the story it's the experience of you know <laughs> going into this film watching it letting it wash over you but yeah. you know what one thing you were saying there is that you know benson and moorhead they always play kind of versions of themselves so there's always a bit of a a blur between you know fiction and reality and i think this is not more evident than in this particular film for so many reasons i mean oh, okay yeah. for, first of all even though we've got the fictional characters of john and levi throughout the film there is footage from benson and moorhead's actual childhood <laughs> that is yes. spliced into the movie so that that you've got the fictional character but it has to line up with the actual real past of yeah, and justin and aaron which i think is so <laughs> apropos. yeah but but at, but at the same time they're doing that thing that i mean certainly that i do which is to take the basic things that you know about yourself and yeah. about your life and then spin them off in another direction. You know, I, I love the idea yeah. of Aaron being like, okay, so, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to be a, a gay guy who's just broken up with his husband and um, gives all his money to an apocalyptic church yeah um yeah you know, and, and and thinks that everybody else is an idiot um yeah. because they because they don't do that um and also that everything is based on math yeah. um, it's like oh okay well you know um probably i'll then be like the most surfer dude version of myself you know mm. somebody who's like uh got on the sex offender registry for peeing against a building somebody who you know helped his helped his sister rob construction sites mm. <laughs> somebody who you know it's like uh you know it's like the best you can do is get a is is get a not particularly good bartender job right <laughs> you know? it's like uh, man even even the fact that uh he's he's dyed the ends of his hair blue yeah so he's like so it's obvious that he dyed his hair blue at one point but he's growing it out now so it yeah. just looks super ridiculous <laughs> so, um i i love the fact that when they meet uh one of the first things that happens is that john manages to get levi smoking again mm. And it's like, wow, this is how this re how this relationship is going to go. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's like, are you good for each other? Or are you bad for each other? Mm, I don't know. You know, it's like there's um, I I also wonder whether the decision was made to make Levi ace um, asexual uh, just to make sure that nobody's like, so are these guys going to kiss at some point or something like that? You know, because mm. previously they'd been brothers. So that yeah. wasn't going to happen, <laughs> but, yeah. you know, but yeah, it's like, it's like this weird toxic relationship where both of them are just looking for something, looking for mm. something to some sort of connective relation, some sort of connective moment. They're looking for 
um, not just a relationship with another person, but like a, a relationship with the universe, because mm. both of them have ended up in places where they don't want to be. You know, it's like how and, and you know, it's like uh, at another point, I, I realized that, you know, this is like a mockumentary about the making of a documentary. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so again, framed and framed and framed, right? You know, um, but everybody else involved in the making of the documentary about the about the documentary um, doesn't believe that any of the stuff that John is telling them happened happened. <laughs> so mm -hmm. you know, it's like because all he's got are, are these, you know, these uh, these tapes where where he and Levi are, you know, it's like, well, we forgot to, to take, <laughs> we forgot to, to take footage of the thing when it was actually happening. Yeah. So we're going to have to pretend that it's happening right now. <laughs> you know, they're, they're reproductions. They're, um, God, what do you, reenactments. Yeah. reenactments. <laughs> you know? Um, but, but yeah, it's like this reaching for connection with the universe th that, mm that documentary thing of everything in your life brought you to this place at this time to meet this person so that X could happen, you mm -hmm. know, so that something could happen. And what was the thing that you wanted to happen? I don't know. Probably not any of the stuff that did happen, but it's hard to tell. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah. I was going to say, I mean, it, to me, it seems like, and we see this a lot in films that deal with the paranormal, mm. is that the characters, they they tend to bring their obsessions that they previously had into this to try to find an interconnectivity to things yes. that only they can see. And you're dealing with phenomenon that is beyond our comprehension. So it's like it's our need to understand something. We use our obsessions, our things that 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 excite us to mm -hmm. to bring an interconnectivity to something that is probably as random as whatever. As you know, I mean else. it's Exactly. I mean, yeah. Is there yeah. is there a connection or not? There 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 could be, but we we we're, we can't even see it. But we try to see that, and I see that a lot. And this film really exemplifies that to like the, to the nth degree. I mean, it's like it's there's so many connections mm -hmm. that, and then when you tie it all together, it's almost like a dark comedy. Uh, it's, it's probably one of the yes. funniest films that they've ever made. I mean, oh god, I, yeah, I, I watched I it so many times. <laughs> oh yeah, I watched it again today, and it's probably like the third time I've seen it. Yeah, and so and uh, I cracked up probably more than this because now I'm starting to see like more connections, and I'm putting my obsessions into these connections that about random things that probably don't even exist. So it actually goes into the viewer, yeah. <laughs> you know. So there's you know, a lot of interconnectivity there. Um, and I just want to make a point too, that the other one, um, that, that, that Levi was actually the one who got John drinking again. So That's there's the tox toxicity. Yeah. It goes kind of both relates. ways. Yeah. It goes both ways. And it, they, yeah. they, these two, this toxic characters attract one another. Yeah. And, and, it's, and yeah, it's the, crazy. The way that, the way that it builds, um, Okay, so, all right, so what we bring to a narrative like this is that we all know that we live in a universe where physics purports to be able to explain everything that happens, um, but once you get past a certain point in physics, everything breaks down so that it becomes entirely theoretical, which is one of the things that always piss me off about science. <laughs> you know, it's like past a certain point, it's like, oh, you know, faith, that's all bullshit. Magic, you know, magical thinking, that's all bullshit. You know, I'm like, well, what the fuck is spooky attraction if it's not magical thinking? What is, you know, you're talking about things that no one can see. You're talking about, well, if these things existed, then. You know, it's like we're 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 pretty sure that because of the way that 
because of the effects that we can see happening in the universe, that there must be something to produce those effects. I'm like, like God? No, no, not like that. Like something else, like, you know, like entropy, like gravity, like <laughs> it's like. And and the thing is that both of those things could be true, or both of those things could be false. None none of us know, and none of us are likely to know until we die or whatever. Yeah, or and maybe not even then. Um, so always when we when we walk into uh, uh, in, into a narrative where people are going, OK, I've found this thing. I've found a keyhole into the truth of the universe. That's all I want to know. I want to know why my ashtray is floating every once in a while. I want to know why there's a light that comes out of the closet. I want to know why, you know, I want to know why people die. <laughs> I want to know what happens after that. <laughs> it's like, it's this tiny little thing that becomes this huge thing. And it stands in for every other huge thing that we don't understand. And, you know, the tiny thing is like, oh, I, that's, that's weird. I, it, it seems like I've lost some mass. Yeah, I don't think that has anything to do with anything. <laughs> Are you sure? Because that's a little weird. Yeah, well, you know, you're pretty skinny. <laughs> it's like, it's a yeah the tiny thing that that you know that you hope if you bore into this tiny little thing and you learn everything about the tiny little thing then a crack will open and you know ah you'll understand everything and and you won't <laughs> it's, it's impossible you're never going to understand everything because you've got a human brain <laughs> it's like you're 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 a you're a smoking drinking monkey you know <laughs> um who's who's just caught up in this thing and and you know and people and the way that the two of them lie to each other all the time mm. the way that the two of them you know manipulate uh what's going on all the time the way that uh or they and again that they reframe the things you know it's like i was downstairs helping lonnie my ex through a a moment that he was having of like an emotional moment. It's like, oh, you, when he was giving you three thousand dollars because you ran out of money, because you gave all your money to the church. <laughs> you know? It's like, yes. <laughs> what you saw that? <laughs> yeah, man, I was looking out the window. <laughs> it's like I live up there. <laughs> it's, it's this insanity of like the all the intersections. And yes, if you start looking around. You, you find you you trip across something like the golden ratio or mm. the golden mean you start looking around you're going to find it everywhere funnily enough because it literally is everywhere in nature mm. <laughs> and it doesn't you know it doesn't surprise me that it's everywhere in um in la as well oh that's another thing um have either of you guys ever read fritz lieber's our lady of darkness i have I love yeah. that book. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing that I, I immediately started to think about was, you know, it's like the secret history of a city and how a city is laid out. And, you know, is there something special that goes into the city that, you know, that uh, creates its own special kind of magic? Um, megalopolisomancy is the term that, uh, mm -hmm. that uh, Fritz Lieber came up with. Um, and yeah, that is a megalopolisomantic structure that they're um that they're attempting to put in there talking about la um mm -hmm. and you know and los angeles is a fascinating it's a fascinating city on a bunch of different bases not just because of the whole hollywood thing but you know but also because it was entirely artificially created and because it, it shouldn't exist where it exists and you know um mm -hmm. and in a lot of and and it's a place where i'm I'm sure you've heard this before but it's a place that seems to at attract people who want to build cults and people who want to be part of a cult mm -hmm. the insane amount of cults from the right. very beginning of mm -hmm. los angeles um and and indeed the very beginning of california just a crazy amount of cults in that area mm -hmm. Um, and all of those things are feeding into, uh, feeding into something in the dirt. You know, it's like, why do two guys meet when one of them moves into the building that the other one is already living into and 
they bond together so quickly, even though there's no reason for them to bond together, to form almost a cult of two. Mm. Mm-hmm. But it's but it's a cult where both of them want to be the leader. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and it, you like, know, and one of the things about our lady of darkness and it kind of ties into the the work of benson and moorhead is is mm-hmm. the, you know the concept of urban weird yeah um and so you know which we saw with archive 81 uh this e- even 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 though like the endless doesn't really take place in a city i think this mm-hmm. is a culmination because now we're dealing with los angeles in the in something in the dirt los angeles is a character onto itself it's a un, it's a character that you yeah. will never understand that you will never fully fathom how how deep it is and how related the city is to every single thing that they're doing it is the the hub of which makes this this whole film work you know which is the crux of of urban weird you know yeah. and so it's uh I just found it fascinating and, you know, watching it and every, every time I've seen it, it's, it's like that, that, you know, that Fritz Lieber connection mm. is there. Um, I, I regret waiting so long to read our lady of darkness. Um, I have yet to read the, the shorter version of that, the more concise, which is the pale Brown thing, yeah. uh, which uh, I heard is, is actually a little bit more, um, in tune with like, you know, the Jim Parsons and, and kind of like all the people who hung out there. Yeah, and exactly. so, yeah, yeah. There's like, there's, there was this whole group of, of people who were all countercultural who all hung out together and yeah. they, and Fritz wrote this story kind of based around, you know, those interactions. And yeah, so absolutely. then, mm-hmm. and, and then of course, um, and then it ties into, to, to, uh, to Suspiria weird deal. You know, and I was like, whoa, that yeah. new, I, I next remember, level right there. <laughs> I remember tripping across uh, Our Lady of Darkness because I read um, what Stephen King wrote about it in Don's mm-hmm. Cobb and mm-hmm. finally found a copy of it and um, at the Spaced Out Library here in Toronto, uh, the Judy Merrill collection, and read it all in, you know, like two hours and went. Oh, this is this is the best, you know. And I, it's 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 hard. Like most things from the seventies, you know, people today would look at it and go like, "What? Yeah, why? Two guys being led around by their dicks, and what's this thing with the? <laughs> yeah, you could call me Philo Sui, you know, and whatever. But yeah, there's just something about it that um, that absolutely gets that thing of. I'm going to follow this thread and this thread and this thread and this thread, and it will lead me somewhere. But as, as Levi says, maybe it just leads to a bunch of threads. Maybe all we've got is a bunch of threads. Um, that, that wonderful thing of, you know, so we begin with the levitating uh, ashtray mm. and every time something happens, it sort of gets weirder and odder and odder and weirder you know, uh, a cactus that isn't supposed to grow fruit grows a piece of fruit. Uh, and, um, you know, may, and uh, we find a tape recorder inside a wall, you know, which seems to be talking about the stuff that's happening in your apartment. And there's light coming out of the closet. And there's, you know, we're, we're fighting gravity, <laughs> you know. Um, and everything is floating, and <laughs> you know, we're trying to pull a rope out of, um, like the endless, trying to pull a rope out of somewhere, <laughs> you know, um, and, and we're moving, oh, oh, and the, uh, the echoing, uh, of, uh, Ode to Joy, of Beethoven's Ode to Joy, which I believe has some, it has some relationship to the golden mean or the golden ratio, I think. Um, but yeah, everything seems to lead to everything else and everything gets bigger and bigger and bigger. You know, it's like the, the stuff starts spacing itself out, but every time it comes back, it comes back larger and larger, eventually leading towards what in another movie would be, you know, the, the perfect culmination, the, the moment of numinosity, the moment of da, 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 except here it's ding, 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 ding. 
ding, 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 you know, like, like a theremin and, uh, mm. and, a, and a bunch of wind chimes. And, <laughs> and, you know, they're, they're both looking at it like, ah, something finally is going to happen, which will reveal everything. And then they just start laying into each other. That's the thing that's revealed. The thing that's revealed is, I hate you. I hate you too. You're the worst person I've ever met. Really? Because I thought maybe you were the worst person I've ever met. You're a total loser. Oh yeah? I've lost more than you have ever seen in your entire life. <laughs> I've lost more money than you've ever seen in your entire life. <laughs> Is that good, though? <laughs> and yeah, it, in in an, in another movie, this would bring them together. <laughs> nope. <laughs> yeah. um, and it's almost even like that moment. Uh, well, you know, we might as well say uh, what happens to Levi. You know, mm -hmm. Levi becomes engulfed by the thing itself. He becomes part of, you know, that 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 line where where he says you know the gravity guy versus the magnetism guy and then he says but maybe you're not either of those guys maybe you're just the thing the thing rustling around in the walls maybe you're just some kind of reptile to john mm -hmm. <laughs> and so he becomes engulfed by those physical um forces he becomes the gravity guy and the magnetism guy and as a result goes floating off into the sky until he drifts out of i guess probably the um the the effect itself and then just falls and dies mm. <laughs> and you're just like <laughs> and and you're like okay so again is that better or worse you know, John is left still trying to get control of this thing, con to literal, literally control of the narrative. It's like, this is my story and I'm going to tell you what it meant, you know, and I'm going to, I'm going to control how it's, how this story is told. And meanwhile, Levi is just like, well, I'm out of this, man. <laughs> you know, I don't have to worry about that shit anymore because I'm fucking dead. <laughs> I also love the fact that he seems to crash on the same beach where he found the skull. <laughs> You're sort of like, was that his skull? <laughs> it's a it's a very Benson and Moorhead kind of moment. It's um so yeah, it's it's this fascinating kind of it's this fascinating kind of unpacking of our own wish to experience something numinous something godlike mm. something you know um some you know some cern super collider kind of moment where we see the god particle you know <laughs> and, and suddenly everything changes and it's like you know again well would that be better or would that be worse because maybe the way that it changes is you drift away into the sky and you mm. die when you crash back to earth <laughs> And then nobody, and then, or you're left and nobody believes you about any of the stuff that happened. It's like, well, you know, the guy's definitely dead. There's a picture of his dead body, but what happened? I don't know. Probably not what you said happened because I just don't trust you, John. You're, yeah. you're a weirdo. <laughs> mm hmm. See, and, and this, watching it this time, mm -hmm. I kind of, I kind of had the feeling mm -hmm. that because of, of, unreliable narrators and things like that. And whose, whose story are we actually seeing? Yeah. Right. And so this time it, I had a feeling that we were seeing the facts as presented by John, who is a manipulative bastard who only wants fame and fortune mm -hmm. and took advantage of Levi, who was vulnerable and a little emotionally unstable and gaslighted this whole thing. And, you know, there's even, you know, there's, there's a small little clip where we see that, that pot, there's a possibility that, that maybe, you know, Levi didn't float up into the sky, that maybe John beat him to death and put his body on the beach, you know? So there's this unreliability yeah. that permeates and it, 
I didn't notice it the first time or the second time. I noticed it this time, and I was like, wow, man, we are because and there's there's those little clips from the other people. The the one that really got me mm. was the the person who was going to be the second editor who was they were asked John asked them to do special effects and they're like we don't we don't I don't I don't do special effects yeah you know because you you lost the footage and now you want special effects in these reenactments yeah you know so it who whose story were we were we watching you know yeah. that's uh, the way that they present it. There's there's an ambiguity there that is just natural and uh, damn you know if they could if they could teach it in a class I'd take it. Thank you so much for listening to This Is Horror. If you enjoyed the story unboxed preview and want to get the full episode, then become a This Is Horror podcast patron at patreon.com forward slash This Is Horror. Next time, we'll be chatting with Ai Jong about her wonderful books, Ling Gwyn and I Am I. You can get that in every episode ahead of the crowd if you become a patron. So, yet another reason to consider joining the This Is Horror Podcast Patreon family. Alright, before I wrap up, let's have a quick advert break. From best-selling author Lee Mountford comes a new supernatural horror series perfect for lovers of demonic haunted houses. Book one, Haunted Perrin Manor, follows two sisters as they move into an old family home only to discover evil already resides there. The series is available in ebook and paperback formats and high-quality audiobooks from producer Hannibal Hills. Search Amazon and Audible for Haunted Perrin Manor now. Don't just read horror, experience it. Through Dry Places is a brand new novella from D.H. Gutierrez. An old Spanish mission lies beneath a serene Texas lake, its secrets hidden for decades. The receding waters of a drought expose its ruins, and it becomes a source of inspiration for Matthew, an urban explorer struggling to maintain his once popular video channel. Determined to make it his next big video, Matthew sets out to uncover the mystery surrounding San Lazaro. But as he delves deeper, he finds himself face to face with his own fears. Through Dry Places by D.H. Gutierrez. Available now on Amazon and beyond. As always, I would like to end with a final thought. And that is, everything is temporary. Emotions, thoughts, people, and scenery. Do not become attached. Just flow with it. And that is from The Mind Journal. I'll see you in the next episode with I Jong. But until then, take care of yourselves. Be good to one another. Read horror. Keep on writing and have a great, great day. This is Horror Podcast.